I'm going to read a chapter or part of a chapter from And Heaven Finds a Witness. This, to get you up to speed on this one, uh, this is a murder mystery. This uh, is where the parents have just received a letter from their deceased son and uh, has asked their two daughters to come home and they have uh, also got a son that had decided to be a draft dodger and they don't know where he is and they never did get in touch with him and this is the story of where he asked this so let's do this are they coming home yes Rhonda will be here in less than three hours and Nicole will be home by nine tonight. Great, can you find a dish for the puppy? I forgot to pick up some food for him. Do you want to come with me to the vet? We have a few hours before the girls get home. I'll give you David a call and see if he can spare us a few minutes to check the pup over and recommend the right diet for him. Shall we have our coffee first? I just made some. Yes, you can pour mine. I want to check something in the den. Give me a few minutes. Gerald closed the door to the den and picked up the phone. A few minutes later, he came out and picked up his coffee cup, sat down beside Grace and stroked the puppy's head. Grace looked at him and smiled. He looked so relaxed. What time did you say the girls will be home? Rondo will be arrive about seven and Nicole will be home around nine this evening. Good, that gives us about three hours to get the puppy checked, checked over and to plan supper. He picked up his jacket, tucked the puppy inside, and they left to do their errands. At the vets, they were both pleased to hear the puppy was very healthy and pr probably live a very long time. David started a file for Teddy Bear. Teddy Bear would be the name they would call him. They completed their errands and headed home. It was nearing the time that Rhonda would be arriving, and Grace began sup to get supper ready. Gerald had disappeared to the den as soon as they came home. She wondered if she should disturb him or wait until Rhonda arrived. She was not sure what to do when the puppy whined, wanting some of her attention. She decided to take him for a walk in the garden. Grace glanced up at the den window. She could, hear, could see Gerald sitting at his desk, his hand rubbing his hair. That was always something he did when he was thinking about the boys. She wondered what triggered Gerald's concern about the boys. This afternoon, he mentioned something about George, about maybe visiting his grave. A car braked in the driveway and a door slammed shut. That must be Rhonda, she thought, as she opened the back door and headed for the living room. Gerald opened the door just as Rhonda was coming up the steps. The puppy stood at his feet, barking. Dad, you got a dog. He looks like a teddy bear. Yes, and that's his official name, but we'll probably call him Teddy. I'll get your suitcases and you can help Mom set the table. We'll eat now. Nicole won't be home until later and Mom can save her a plate. Mom, it's good to see you, Rhonda said as she gave her mother a warm hug and kiss. Go and freshen up and I'll check on supper. We'll talk when you're done. Rhonda hurried to the bathroom to freshen up. It was great to be home. Her mother looked first rate. Maybe the new puppy was a great, was a great idea. They always had dogs around the house when they were growing up. Mom had raised corgis just so she could be home with her family when they were young. She talked about getting a job when they all left home. Rhonda was the last to leave the nest and fly on her own. Funny that Mom hadn't mentioned they were thinking of getting a dog, Rhonda thought. She had talked about changing the yard around to have more flowers and maybe a fish pond and a gazebo. Her dad had put her suitcase in her, their old room and was waiting for his turn to clean up before dinner. From Mom's kitchen came the enticing odor of roast beef, mashed potatoes and peas, mingled with the smell of fresh baked garlic bread and roasting apples beckoning her to the kitchen. She helped her mother put on silverware and filling the glass water glasses 
She thought about the last time all the family had been together. Her brothers had been in a heated conversation over the pending war in Vietnam and the choices they would make if they were drafted. She and her sister hadn't mentioned their brother Glenn in the presence of their father since George's funeral. For a few brief moments, Rhonda thought about George. He couldn't come back, but if only there would be a miracle and she could see her brother Glenn again. It was a hopeless situation. They had not been allowed to try and find their brother even after George's death in Vietnam. Pushing her melancholy thoughts aside, she returned to the kitchen to help her mom read, bring out the food. During the supper, Wanda watched her parents. Her dad seemed a little distracted. He couldn't, she couldn't put her finger on what was giving him away, but there was something bothering him. After dessert and tea, Gerald disappeared into the den again. Rhonda and her mom washed the supper dishes. Mom, what's disturbing Dad? I'm not sure what it is. Mom, we both know Dad. He wouldn't call us home just to see the puppy, would he? When we did our errands before you got home, there was something he mentioned. That, and the way he's been running his hand through his hair, makes me think he's thinking about the boys. You know, Mom, I've been thinking a lot about Glenn since I saw the puppy. Remember, he took one of Mitch's puppies when he left. How could I forget? He picked the best of the litter. Teddy whined. He needed to go for a walk. They put on their coats and took him out to the yard. They sat down on the steps to watch him explore his new world. Teddy raced around and then raced back to where they sat. They both reached out to stroke his curly black head. He nestled in between them, enjoying all this attention. A few minutes after nine, they heard another car pull into the driveway and park. Rhonda hurried out to meet Nicole. Her mother headed to the kitchen to put on the plate of food in the microwave. Nicole would be hungry. She prob would, probably didn't stop for a break. She would have wanted to come home as quickly as possible. Gerald had been in the den most of the evening. He was trying to decide if he should call Glenn. He had reached for the phone five times, and he had hung it up five times without trying to find the telephone number. Hearing the girls at the front door, he picked up the phone and dialed the operator and gave Glenn's address. Sorry, sir, there's no one by that name in our directory. He hid his disappointment as he put down the phone as Nicole came waltzing into the den. Have you had your supper, he asked. Mom is warming it up. Have you seen the latest addition to the family? Absent-mindedly, he put his hand to his head and began rubbing his hand over his hair. No, Dad, I haven't. Grace came to the doorway carrying her supper plate, and at her mum's feet a little black cocker spaniel danced. Dad, you didn't call me home just for this, she said as she bent to pick up the puppy. You eat your supper and let me know when you're done. He got up and closed the door behind them. He reached into his pocket for the desk keys and unlocked the drawer, picking up out the yellow den letter, he put it in his shirt pocket and went to join the girls and his wife in the living room. Nicole had finished her supper and was waiting with a cup of tea. Would you like a cup of tea, Dad? Not right now. I think I should tell you why I called your girls home. Yes, Dad, we'd like to know. We know you didn't call us home for the puppy. He sat down in the Chesterfield and asked Grace to sit beside him. The girls sat down in the two big comfy chairs across from them. He asked Grace to turn on the reading lamp and pull the letter from his shirt pocket. Grace, seeing the handwriting on the letter, started to leave her seat. But Gerald hand her, handed her his handkerchief. Dabbing her eyes, she twisted the handkerchief in her hands. This is why I called you home. It's a letter from George. That can't be a letter from George. He's dead, Rhonda said bluntly. Yes, of course, but it's important that I read it to you. Tears welded in all their, their eyes as he read George's last letter. For a few moments they sat in silence, each having their own private thoughts. 
Wanda, Rhonda watched as her mother reached for the letter and held it close to her heart. Gerald, George asked you to forgive Glenn for becoming a draft dodger. Nicole hadn't waited for Gerald's answer. She was reaching for the phone in the kitchen and trying to get the Canadian telephone number for her brother. I've already tried to get the number, but they say they have no record of the name at that address. From the, Nicole, the kitchen, Nicole called her dad and asked for the name of Glenn's wife. Thank you, operator. She called her dad to the kitchen and handed him the phone. A tiny voice on the other end said, hello. Hello, this is your grandfather. Sorry, you have the wrong number. The phone went dead. She hung up. Glenn had been out walking Yogi when the phone call came. Glory had to get, had come to get the phone when she heard her daughter say to that whoever was calling had the wrong number. Rory, I wish you would let Mommy or Daddy answer the phone. It might be important. That one wasn't for us. It was a man who said, Hello, this is your grandfather. I don't have a grandfather. Glenn and Yogi came into the living room just as Rory was explaining to her mom that she didn't have a grandfather. Glory looked at Glenn, but he just shook his head and said, She's too young to understand. Glenn went to the window and looked out. He stood there rubbing the back of his neck, something he'd picked up from his father. Glory went and put her arms around him. She knew he was thinking of his parents, his brother, and his sisters. He had received one letter from his brother saying he would stop over in Canada on his way home from the war, and he also knew George had written his parents and was going to give them the, his address. He had given up hope from on hearing from them. The doorbell rang. Glenn greeted his brother-in-law and left with him to go to the meeting. Glory ran the tub for Rory's bath, bedtime bath and didn't hear the phone. Rory answered the phone. No, Daddy's not home. Mom, when will Daddy be home? Who is it, Rory? It's a lady. Who are you? I'm your grandma. No, you're not. You don't sound like grandma. Rory, you shouldn't have hung up on Grandma. Don't do that again. Go get in the tub and into your PJs. I'll call Grandma back. Dialing her mom's number, she wondered if everything was all right. Roy definitely knew her grandmother's voice on the phone. Hi, Mom. Is everything fine at your house? Of course, Glory. Why do you ask? I just want to apologize for Roy for hanging up on you. What do you mean? Didn't you just call here a few minutes ago? No, Glory. I haven't called since yesterday when we talked. Okay, Mom. I'll have to talk to Rory again and find out what's going on. Can I call you later? She switched the phone to the answering machine and went to talk to her daughter. Rory was snuggled into her PJs and Yogi sat on the bed. The talk can wait until tomorrow, Glory decided, and instead read a bedtime story. The phone rang again partway through the story. She let it ring. Whoever was calling could leave a message. It's just an answering machine, machine, Gerald said as he hung up on the phone. I hate those machines. It's getting late. I think we should all go to bed and get the best night's sleep we can. You're right, Dad. We don't know what time it is where Glenn is living. When the others had gone to bed, Nicole went to the kitchen and called the number again. She heard her brother's voice on the recording and she left her message. Glenn, please call when you get this message. She would sleep better tonight knowing that her brother would recognize her voice and call as soon as he could. Satisfied that Glenn would get the message, Nicole wrote, returned to the living room. Her mother had the photo album out and they were looking at pictures. Her dad was excited when he talked about the pictures of the fishing trips he, with the boys. Before the war, they had been close, and both the boys liked the, his hobby of fishing. They had thought about planning a trip to Alaska for King Salmon. They were laughing over a picture of, of the whole family and didn't realize the phone was ringing. Glenn had arrived home and saw the light blinking on the message machine. 
He was about to push the button to see who called when Glory came into the kitchen. Glenn, there have been a couple of strange phone calls tonight. What do you mean, strange phone calls? Rory answered them both, and she hung up on them. Well, that's all right. That's what she's supposed to do if they aren't for us. Wrong numbers. Glenn, I'm not sure she shouldn't have tried to take a message or wait for me to see who it was. Why? Glenn, the second call came after you left. It was a woman, and she told Roy she was your gra her grandma. Roy said you don't sound like grandma and hung up. I called mom, and she hadn't called since yesterday. Glenn, there's been two calls since I put the answering machine on. Glenn reached over and pushed the message button. The first call, no one left a message. Then, Glenn, please call. Shocked, Glenn stared at the machine, then punched the rewind and message buttons again. Glenn, who is that? It sounds like, like my sister, Nicole. His heart pounded as he dialed the numbers. Nicole had been tossing in her sleep, not used to sleeping with her sister. She had got up and moved to the sofa in the living room. She went to the kitchen to get a drink of water when the phone rang. Hello, hello, Nikki. Yes, it's me. I know it's late, but I had to be sure it was you who called. Glenn, it's so great to hear your voice. We miss you. Nikki, do you know if Mom or Dad tried to call tonight? If they did, would you let them know they will all be home and waiting for another call around 8 o'clock in the morning? What time is it there? It's midnight. Okay, that makes two hours difference in time. I'll make sure they make the call. Talk to you in the morning, Glenn. I'm glad you got the message and called back. Nicole, thank you for leaving the message. Glenn turned to Glory and wrapped his arms around her. Holding her close, he whispered, I hope Dad will forgive me. I wonder what made them to decide to call. If Dad does want to talk to me, I don't know what to say. And I'm going to stop. Thank you.